How to break in a new engine is an extremely contentious topic. In this video from the MC Garage, we tackle the issue head on and bust the engine breaking myth once and for all. What is engine breaking? Well, fresh from the factory parts, like this piston here, have microscopically rough surfaces that need to rub against their counterparts and bed in. And that happens during those first few miles of use on the road. Once a component is polished smooth and broken in, friction is reduced, sealing is improved, and you're guaranteed better performance, better fuel economy, and better reliability. There are a lot of sliding and rotating parts within an engine, but the thing that everyone gets all riled up about when we talk about engine break-in is the seal between the piston rings and the cylinder. And rightfully so, the condition of that seal has a huge impact on your engine's performance and its longevity. What's the best way to get a good seal on those piston rings? If you follow the procedure outlined in your owner's manual for engine break-in, it'll probably recommend a 600, 1000, or even a 1500 mile process, wherein you limit throttle application and revs and constantly vary the engine speed. At the other end of the spectrum, there are people that say that a gentle break-in is a waste of time and not an effective way to seal those piston rings, and that a more condensed and aggressive and maybe even brutal engine break-in is the way to go. I have my own opinion on the matter based on personal experience, and there are certainly a lot of opinions out there on the interwebs, but rather than relying on anecdotes and upvotes, we decided to answer the engine break-in question with hard numbers. And the best way to do that break in some engines. So what I did was assemble two identical Honda CB300F engines with fresh top end parts, break them in differently, and then examine the results. Seeing as this is the most delicate topic we've ever covered, I thought a second set of eyes was in order and enlisted the help of the Racetech engine shop in Corona, California, which is where I go when I need cylinders bored or valve seats recut. Andrew at Racetech helped me spec and document all the parts before assembly, ensuring we had baseline measurements that were accurate to within a ten thousandth of an inch. Back in the MC garage, I installed the first engine and broke it in gently as per the manual, painstakingly limiting and varying the throttle and slowly ratcheting up the revs over the course of a thousand miles. Then I swapped out the baby motor for engine number two. While engine number one didn't kiss redline until that final one thousandth mile, the second engine was given a minute to warm up, then it was ridden at or near wide open throttle on the highways of SoCal for the entire thousand miles. Both engines were initially filled with Bell Ray semi-synthetic oil, and I changed the fluid and filter at 600 miles as recommended. After breaking in these two engines using drastically different methods, I then did a compression and a leak down test, which is a standard way of checking the health of the top end components before trucking the motors back out to Corona to race tech, where we disassembled, measured and inspected the parts. And the results, well, they might surprise you. Thanks, Josh. The conclusion is there was no obvious difference between the engines. In fact, there was no discernible difference between the engines. The critical specs, like the compression and leak down, were stellar and identical on both engines, and all the measurements, like the piston diameter, the cylinder diameter, the ring end gap, the valve clearances, were all within spec. In fact, we've listed all of those specifications in the video description if you want to check them out for yourself. The only measurable difference was in the ring end gap on the engine that we broke in brutally, and that was it. Similarly, there was no clear difference between the color or the debris content in the oil that we drained out of the motors at 600 miles. If you are shocked, I am too. Who knew? But you know what? Now we do. Speaking of engine oil, that is a subcategory to the whole engine break-in controversy. Should you use synthetic oil or should you use mineral oil? We circumvented the issue entirely by using a mix of both with semi-synthetic oil. And while I'm sure the comment section is going to be riddled with requests for dyno figures, we would need before and after dyno numbers for those figures to be relevant, right? Well, you can't exactly rev out an engine that you're supposed to be breaking in by the book, i.e. not revving it out. Plus, a dyno number is really just the net result of all of the critical specs that we dove into the engine to measure. So hopefully you guys realize that we actually took the much harder route by actually going inside the engine and inspecting the parts that are at the center of this whole engine break-in controversy to begin with. 
So we've more or less shown that it doesn't matter how you break in an engine, the results are gonna be the same, right? Well, not so fast. This CB300F here, even when it's being run at full throttle, just isn't working that hard because it's in a mild state of tune. If you're on a more high performance bike, like say a CBR600RR that revs to 15,000 RPM, I would not recommend going right to wide open throttle. Each engine is gonna be different with different cylinder materials, different compression ratios, and different red lines. But the lesson here, the takeaway, is that there doesn't seem to be a night and day distinction between break-in methods. So don't sweat it. Motorcycles are meant to be ridden and enjoyed, so just go out and enjoy it. That being said, I think the long and drawn out break-in recommendation found in most owner's manuals persists for two reasons. First, it's a holdover from days of yore, when metallurgy, machining technology, and lubricants just weren't that good. Second, it's just a really good idea to take it easy on a new motorcycle. It's not just the engine that has to break in, you've got new tires that need to scrub in, you've got brakes that need to bed in, and you've got you that needs to get familiar with your bike in the way it handles, the way it balances, the way it shifts and stops. And while failures on modern motorcycles are very rare, if something does happen, it's most likely gonna happen in the first few hundred miles. So wouldn't it be better if something broke or rattled loose while you're trundling along at 25 miles an hour rather than 75 miles an hour? All things considered, there are just a lot of really good reasons to give yourself and your bike a few days of gentle riding before you give it the beans. So there you go, a definitive fact-based comparison between engine break-in methods. I wanna thank Honda for lending us this CB300F for the better part of a year and supplying us with all the parts we needed for the project. I also wanna thank Racetech for backing us up on this whole thing and for helping me win a lot of races over the years with their very quick and very precise machining services. And of course, I wanna thank you guys for suggesting this topic over and over again until I finally got off my ass and did something about it. As always, thank you for watching and until next time, ride safe.